What's going on everybody? Zach's Corn Bag Reviews, back with another one. Before we jump into it, just take a look underneath this video where it's playing right now under YouTube. Do you see that subscribe button down there on the right hand side? If it says subscribe, go ahead and push that for me. Push it, subscribe to the channel, go ahead and hit the bell while you're at it so you can be notified whenever I do drop some more of these videos. You won't have to miss one. Now let's jump into this review. Today we're talking about the Rebel Bag Co. Culprit. Starting with the materials on this bag, we're going to start with the fast side, and that's a very popular 8 speed fast side. It's great for sliding up the board, going hole for hole, pushing through some congestion, collecting, going around blockers and slurping right into the hole, dripping in too easy. Boards are slow, flip it over on the fast side, it travels no problem. Any kind of moisture, humidity, this fast side is still going to move for you. You still got an eight speed fast side on this bag. On the slow side, we have that very, very popular herringbone carpet. If you haven't paid attention to what's going on out there in the cornhole bag market right now, every company, I feel like I can say every company is coming out with a bag with this herringbone carpet for good reason. It truly allows you to play any style game that you can think of. Now, the speeds on this herringbone carpet, it varies. Uh, it varies by break-in process. It varies by how clean it is. It varies by how uh, fuzzy it is. Brand new out of the bag, it's gonna play about a six. When it's pretty stiff, it's playing at about a six. Once you start to break it in, uh, depending on your break-in method, it'll drop down to about a five, and it kind of stays consistently around that five until it gets beat in pretty well, starts to fuzz up pretty good, and then it could drop down to about a four. But we're gonna call it a five. I think it stays there more consistently than any other uh, speed range. I believe it plays at about that five. But once again, you can do anything with this bag. It can go hole for hole. You can lay blockers. You can roll with this material. The only thing that I will say that it struggles with is consistently going around and dripping into the hole. If you just get a corner of the bag in, it's gonna grab and it's gonna slurp around, but it can hang up there with this material. That material, it's not the most hole friendly material in the world, but what you lose in hole friendliness, you gain in versatility. Template on this bag, you're sitting at, on the smaller side of the ACL spectrum. Now this bag is ACL Pro Stamp for 2024. So it does meet those requirements that, that, that the ACL puts out there, but it is in that 5.8, 5.85 uh, inches range when it comes to the template. It's not a true six by six, it's smaller, which is fine. A lot of people like smaller bags because it allows those bags to also be a little bit fuller. And this is a little bit fuller bag. It reminds me of the Wizard in terms of fullness. And, I mean, it's the exact same materials as the Wizard 2. Now, the difference in this bag from others is going to be that fill type. It has a mixed fill to it. There are some medium-sized beads. There are small beads. There's even some flat in there. It's a true mixed fill bag, but it feels great. It feels great in hand. And because of the amount, you can literally lock that bag down no matter what kind of grip you take. The bag's going to lock down and it's not going to, you don't have to worry about it moving in space or the beads flowing around in space for you. You're going to take your grip, you're going to have confidence in your grip, and that's going to lead to overall better scores because you have confidence. Another thing with this is because of that mix fill, where we were talking about how the, the slow side isn't as hole friendly, this aids in that hole friendliness. Now, if this was a flat disc only bag, when it hung up on the hole, it would stay there. It wouldn't move. Flat disc just lays on top of itself and it does not move. It doesn't like to move at all, period. With this though, once it goes around and hangs up, you're still going to have those beads start to shuffle and start to move. And if you get enough of those cascading, it's going to drip in the hole. Uh, if you're watching the video on the side, I'm sure there's a couple times where I had a bag hanging on the side. Take a couple seconds, easily falls right in. If it doesn't, as long as you have another bag or your opponent has another bag and they go up there and they touch it, they're going to make beads move, it's going to fall in the hole. Don't worry about it. 
So we talked about materials, we talked about the fill, we talked about the template. Who's this bag for? Who can play this bag? Anybody can play this bag. It's truly a bag that anybody can play. But I feel like it's made for those individuals that truly like to play the hybrid style game. I want to be able to run hole for hole. I can do that easily with this bag. I want to switch it up a little bit and start throwing blockers. I can do that. But with that also, you need to be able to have a consistent tilt in your throw. Because yes, this bag will shift on you, it will kick on you. When you start dealing with that five and under speed materials, they do have a little bit of kick, a little bit of cut to them because they have more friction. And also when you're dealing with a four bag, it's going to want to move on you, especially when that four bag is a mixed fill. There's that trade-off. Once again, flat fill is going to be a lot more forgiving. It's going to spread out and go travel straight, whereas a mixed fill, it's going to want to move. just depends on the style of game that you want to play. <clears throat> but if I have a consistent tilt in my throw, then I can already judge and know what the bag is going to do. A person that has a real wobble throw or an inconsistent tilt, it's tilted one way or the other, or you have no clue how that bag is going to come out, I don't believe this is a bag that you want to try out just yet. Uh, it will kick on you with that crazy wobbles or that inconsistent tilt on it. It's going to kick on you, and it may not kick all the way off the board, but it's going to kick enough to miss the hole and go past it, beyond it, even potentially over it. But as long as you have a consistent tilt or a flat bag, you are absolutely golden with this bag. I truly love these materials. It has become my favorite materials in the game. The mixed fill is great. I absolutely love this style bag. I mean, there, what isn't to like about it? Likes, including likes. Go ahead and like this video down below. If you haven't uh, gone to rebelbagco.com and checked out what they got going on, head over there, check those guys out. They got a lot of other bags out there. Matt is pumping out some really great stuff. If you haven't joined Team Rebel, you want to get over there and jump on Team Rebel, uh, the Facebook page. They're coming out with their uh, Halloween designs, awesome killer designs. And I mean, Matt just does great work when it comes to bag making. And everybody wants to talk about how great uh, ultra closing scenes are, which they are. I'm not denying that. But come on. That's just that what? Come on. Look at that. Put those side by side. Tell me that's not in the same category. Just next level crafts. I enjoy this bag. I think it's a great bag. I think anybody can throw it. The only per people that I think should probably stay away from this bag, we talked about inconsistent flight throwers. If you like a larger template floppy bag, keep trolling. Try something else out. But all in all, that's the Rebel Bag Culprit. I'll see you in the next one.